Florida is a state known for some of the worst urban sprawl and suburban expansion, making a mockery of American city planning. This state is home to some of the most infamous cities and communities in the whole country, and this isn't a coincidence. So today I'm going to talk about the history of expansion in Florida, and how it went as far as repurposing the grid design just for the sake of laziness, and creating completely abandoned cities. Before the video starts, I would like to quickly ask if you'd consider subscribing to the channel. I make videos about the United States geography every week, so if you enjoy what I'm doing and want to support me, subscribing helps out a ton. Almost everyone who watches these videos aren't subscribed, so in all likelihood you're not, so just please check that you are, and if you're not, please consider doing so. This is Lehigh Acres. It's an unincorporated community located to the east of Fort Myers, boasting a population of 135,000. Lehigh Acres is the main reason I made this video, catching my eyes while scrolling around Google Maps. Now, I immediately knew this community would have an interesting story, just by the road layout. See, Lehigh Acres is decked out in a simple grid design, with each road only having a few houses on it. Well over half of Lehigh Acres is just unowned lots, with houses being spread out throughout the community. Because of the way the city has been developed, it was clear that there was some history behind it. So I looked around to figure out what was going on, and it basically showed me the whole history of Florida. So Lehigh Acres was developed in the 1950s by a Chicago businessman, Lee Ratchner, who moved to Florida to get away from the taxation of his former city. He bought 18,000 acres east of Fort Myers and built a ranch for himself. But it didn't take long for him to come up with a money-making scheme in his new home, and he decided to turn his sprawling ranch into one of Florida's first major real estate developments. Working closely with his friend and marketing protege, Gerald Gold, Ratchner launched one of the most brilliant land schemes in Florida history, targeting white middle-class suburban families of the Midwest. He advertised a tropical paradise just 10 miles from the Gulf of Mexico, tricking these families into buying dirt-cheap lots in the Florida swamp. Despite the early consumer enthusiasm and rapid sales of land, no one on the original development team had actually expected people to move to Lehigh. After all, the town was unincorporated and remains so until today. Basic utilities, including power, water, and drainage, were simply non-existent. A few people moved in and construction was somewhat successful. But mostly, the land was left empty because it was too difficult to build on. People slowly stopped buying lots, and with the dirt-cheap price they were being sold at, the original owners could not afford the upkeep needed to run the community, and the Lehigh Corporation was sold and resold to avoid bankruptcy until finally disappearing in the late 1980s. That seemed like the end for them, with the city falling into urban blight and the land being passed down to new generations, who ended up losing money because the land was worth less than the annual taxes on the parcel itself. The vast stretches of pre-planned neighborhoods proved to be kindling for the fire that was sparked by the sudden availability of subprime mortgages in the early 2000s. Fueled by a sudden boom in construction, property prices began to surge overnight. Soon everyone jumped in on the real estate flipping game. Lehigh Acres saw another seven years of growth, with nobody learning anything from the complete scam that had taken place in the past. But yet again, the city slowed down in the exact same way, with investors beginning to back away from some of the riskier ventures they had pledged to support, and buyers suddenly finding themselves stuck with properties for which they had paid top dollar, only to discover that nobody was interested in paying that price, or any price for that matter. Now, if you're following along, you'll realize the year is now 2008, and some stuff is about to go down. So, after the housing market crashed, Lehigh Acres never recovered. Only a handful of now bank-owned lots are well-kept, with the rest being overgrown and falling apart. Now, this seems like an interesting story of how a Florida community developed in the worst way possible. But if you know anything about the state, you'll know that this is basically the exact same story as many communities in southern Florida. If you go even farther back into history, you'll run into the man that made Florida this way, Henry Flagler. He was born in 1830 and was an industrialist and founder of the Standard Oil Company. So basically, this guy went down to Florida for his second wedding and decided he liked the warm, sunny atmosphere of the state. He bought a hotel in St. Augustine and abandoned his oil project to focus on this venture. Realizing the need for a sound transportation system to support the project, Flagler made it his mission to build the Florida East Coast Railway. This would be a difficult task since most of eastern Florida coastline just happened to be a swamp. So building a railroad through that swamp would require some help. This help came from the state government in the form of 3,840 acres of land for every mile of railroad constructed. So this meant that when Flagler finished the line, he received hundreds of thousands of acres worth of South Florida land. So much that he didn't know what he should do with it. So he decided to start selling it to people, becoming the start of a vicious cycle that meets Florida today. Flagler founded such cities as Palm Beach and Miami, which was almost named after him. 
Most major cities in Florida were founded in this same way, with rich businessmen selling land to people, tricking them into moving into the swamp that Florida is. Another major player in the Florida city designing scam was the General Development Corporation, owned by brothers Elliot, Robert, and Frank Mackle. These three brothers established several communities in the 1950s and 60s, including Port St. Lucie, Port Charlotte, and Northport. This company is the most infamous in my eyes because even before I knew about them, I wanted to talk about those three cities and why I hated them. This shows how easy it is to see whether or not a city has been made in this way or not. You can easily tell without even going out of Google Satellite whether or not a city was created by a company to make a boatload of money. Now, I wanted to talk about a few communities specifically, in the same way I looked at Lehigh Acres, because there are many, many instances of absolutely disgusting, sprawling cities in Florida. The first one I want to talk about is Port Charlotte, as well as the connected city, Northport. These two cities are one of the previously mentioned communities established by the General Development Corporation, and they have something very peculiar going on that we see all around Florida, and that's abandoned and blighted streets. So basically, when these cities were being planned, the founders made complete road layouts so they would never run out of room for people to buy lots, paving miles upon miles of suburban streets ready for people to move in. But as I said when talking about Lehigh Acres, the housing boom only lasted for around 10 years in the 50s before collapsing for, for the next 30 years. This meant that there were whole neighborhoods of suburban roads completely collapsed and abandoned, not used by anyone. They look like they belong in somewhere like South America, not 10 miles outside of major American cities. Now, these roads have become major problems because they aren't illegal to go on, but there's no law enforcement or anything patrolling these areas, meaning they've become major havens for drug deals and crime. Next time I'm in Florida, I fully plan on exploring one of these areas because it sounds scarier than any horror movie. And the stuff you could find walking these streets is probably worth the trip. Alright, next I want to move away from the abandoned neighborhoods and instead talk about some of the extremes of Florida city planning. Starting with Rotunda West, an unincorporated private community yet again located in the Cape Coral, Fort Myers area. The main thing that makes Rotunda so interesting is the wagon wheel shape it holds, obviously showing it was completely pre-designed. Basically, it started out as a cattle ranch owned by two brothers, purchasing the land in 1952. Then later on in 1969, they sold a portion of it that is now Rotunda West. The development began in 1970, with the plan of a community mimicking temporary World War II airfields in Florida. Rotunda West has basically completely been planned out to favor old retirees, with canals, golf courses, tennis courts, and a park in the middle. Next, I wanted to talk about Cape Coral itself, an absolute disgrace of a large U.S. city. It has a sad population of 189,000 and is growing quickly. So it was originally founded by two brothers who lived in Baltimore, Maryland at the time. They flew over the peninsula that was then coastal swampland, and for whatever reason, they saw that swampland and decided it would be perfect for their completely pre-designed community. So all throughout the early 1960s, pre-designed canals and roads were built, and in 1963, the first few people had started to move in. 80 miles of road had been built, and 160 miles of canals had been dug. A large bridge was built over the Caloosahatchee River, which opened in 1964. So now, the population is growing rapidly, with the south part of the town feeling like paradise to most, and slowly becoming more spread out and empty as you move farther north into the undeveloped parts of Cape Coral. Next up, the last city I wanted to talk about is Loxahatchee, an unincorporated area located in the Miami-West Palm Beach area. Its layout is much like Lehigh Acres, with the grid design forming basically the whole area. It seems to be much like Lehigh Acres if Lehigh Acres was developed in the right way. They didn't overdo it, and there aren't any abandoned neighborhoods, though it's still clear the area was formed in the same way, selling acre lots to unassuming northerners. Loxahatchee is controversial for intruding on preserved land and destroying the Loxahatchee River that ran through the south part of the area. So because it destroyed wildlife and preserved areas, the animal presence there is pretty cool. Otters, ospreys, turtles, and many other wildlife roam the area. A part of Loxahatchee was recently incorporated into Loxahatchee Grove as to preserve the rural aspect of the city from the impending suburbanization. Before I end the video, I think it's important to highlight the time period where all of these were developed and show how it's important to the decline of the Rust Belt, something I talked about in a recent video. So most of these communities were established in the 1950s and 60s, which goes along well in the timeline of air conditioning, which became widespread in the 1950s. Now this time period was a time for the thriving post-war American economy, with the Rust Belt still going strong, but the South starting to grow. In the 60s, experts started to realize the end was near for the Rust Belt, 
with all these new communities popping up all over the Sun Belt and Florida area. So with the suburbanization of America and the move away from inner cities that were found in the Northeast, came the development of disgusting cities in Florida, as well as other states that mainly grew in the 60s and later. There isn't much Florida can do now, as it continues to grow its suburbs and become a garbage dump of sprawl. I don't have a good ending for this story, because we're continuing to see the suburbs grow, and the state become worse and worse. Thanks for watching.